Hey guys, Runway has been quiet for a very long time. You guys might remember that their text to video model Gen 2 came out quite a while ago and there was quite a lot of fanfare. Their preview videos looked amazing, but the actual generated AI footage once you started using it ended up looking kind of mid. And here's the thing, since Gen 2 came out, we've had so many other competitors announce their own text to video models. We've had Google release a couple models. We had Meta announce at least one model. We had Adobe announce Firefly. And finally, we had OpenAI announce Sora. And guys, during this entire time, Runway didn't say a single thing. I think a lot of people thought, including myself, that after OpenAI announced Sora, that Runway had simply decided to give up. But then guys, Runway, suddenly out of the blue, announced that they had created Gen 3 and that it was out now. Like literally, it's out now, it's usable, meaning you could go to their website and use it right now. This surprise happened about 48 hours ago and this is how it looks. This is the most amazing jump in generative AI video development that I have seen and I did not expect for it to get this good this fast. Take a look at all of these. These are all generated from scratch, pixel by pixel from a single text prompt. This is not a paid video. Runway has no idea that I'm making this. I thought about this and right now I wanna dive in and test Gen 3 myself. The first test is gonna revolve around how realistic does this generated AI footage actually look? Meaning, could I actually use this AI generated footage to replace actual stock footage? Because when I'm editing tutorials, I'm usually searching for a lot of the same types of B-roll. Shots of someone, say, video editing, an intro aerial to a specific city that I'm shooting from, like Brisbane, Australia, or now, as of three weeks ago, beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, or maybe a shot of someone shooting in a studio with a camera. Now guys, check this out. The overall quality I'm seeing is absolutely spectacular. Almost all of the shots that were supposed to look photorealistic actually look photorealistic. A couple didn't, but they were in the minority. One potential issue I'm finding is when I'm actually writing down in my prompt something that I'm calling compound commands. So say if I wanted to have a black guy holding a camera and taking a picture of someone surfing in the ocean, somehow the compound nature of some of these prompts seems to throw Gen 3 off a little bit. Another thing I've noticed is like kinetic contact seems to be an issue in some cases. So say I have like a dog trying to eat a piece of steak, the contact of the dog's mouth on the steak if you look closely, there's a tendency for it to look unnatural. Now for the second test. Can this AI generated footage blend seamlessly with my existing footage? The only issue so far is Gen 3 seems to only be spitting out 720p footage up until this point. We really need to get that up to at least 1080p and ideally 4K footage as soon as possible. Another possible workaround is you could use outside software like say Topaz to up res up to 4K, but the issue is Topaz is still kind of expensive and the processing time is ridiculously long. We still have a couple more tests to go, but I wanna do something fun real quick. I wanna actually see how well Gen 3 footage blends with my current workflow because I don't want this to be just something that I use for fun. I want Gen 3 to be something that I'm actually able to use in my business to make money and as a creative to make more beautiful art. And it has to fit into my existing workflow, obviously, in order for it to be a functional thing that I'm actually going to be using day in and day out. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go get a tutorial that I've already edited in the past and I'm going to overlay some of these B-roll footage clips that I was able to generate in Gen 3 and see how well it compares with the stock footage B-roll clips that I downloaded from a stock footage website. And if I do a quick little edit, understanding that I am dealing with 720 footage, so I'm gonna have to blow it up to match my 4K A-roll, I say that for now it actually works pretty well. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sneak some AI generated Gen 3 footage into the B-roll of some of my future tutorials, and I want you to see and point it out in the comments if you notice. The next little workflow test I wanna do is I wanna see if I can actually create music video footage 
all completely within Gen 3. And then I wanna throw in some cool transitions using, let's say my deflection transitions pack. So I got these clips and I'm gonna drop them now into my After Effects timeline. I'm gonna apply a couple of these easy click and drag transition effects from my deflection transitions pack. Link in the description below, by the way. These are K-pop music video transition effects that our team made that can be applied to pretty much any genre of short form social media content to bring that extra punch to the edit. Okay, let's put some of this additional Gen 3 generated footage through my e-prism effects pack. What's really cool is there's gonna be a time when you're not gonna even need these third party packs to do these really cool lens distortion prism effects. You're probably gonna be able to do all of this within Gen 3 internally and in not too long, which doesn't really help me that much. But for now, just download the pack in the description and follow along. Now I'm gonna choose these clips to bring into my After Effects timeline and place these prism effects on top. I'll do a little tweaking of the prism effect parameters and voila, this actually looks pretty good. The prism effect adds somewhat of a lens distortion effect to the footage that you see in a lot of upscale ads and a ton of music videos. Okay, for our third test, how do fingers look in Gen 3? As a lot of you guys know, generative AI in the past have had an issue with generating realistic looking fingers with the right number of fingers on any specific hand. I'll say that after doing a few tests, there are still some issues in Gen 3 as far as fingers go, but it's pretty forgivable. And the mistake doesn't happen every time, but it still does happen quite a lot. I would say in my opinion, just maybe give it some time. Going on to our fourth test, how accurate is the actual video generation to the actual prompt that's being typed? Meaning how much time am I gonna have to waste finessing prompts till I get exactly what I actually want? So, so far on average, I've had to submit a prompt maybe two or three times to get the perfect result. According to Gen 3's prompt guide, prompts are most effective when they follow a clear structure that divides the details about the scene, subject, and camera movement into separate sections. Like for example, a great prompt would be low angle static shot, the camera is angled up at a woman wearing all orange as she stands in a tropical rainforest with colorful flora. It was also stated in the guide that repeating or reinforcing key ideas in different sections of your prompt can actually help increase adherence in the output. For example, in a prompt, you might note that the camera quickly flies through a scene in a hyper speed shot. Another thing mentioned was to try to keep your prompt focused on what should be in the scene. For example, you would prompt for a clear sky rather than a sky with no clouds. So guys, onto our next test. How long does it actually take to generate each video? During all my tests, every video generation took between 30 seconds and one minute, which is crazy. Very, very impressive and unexpected. I've used so many significantly worse text to video models and I've had to wait from 15 to 20 minutes for every generation. So onto our sixth test. Does Gen 3 do text well? Like how accurately is the title or the text actually spelled in the final video generation? As we know, generative AI has had a lot of issues with this in the past. Another thing, let's say that this actually works well, could Gen 3 actually be used instead of an actual like third-party text pack? Instead of figuring out how to import and use a third-party text pack in your video editor, could you literally just go to Gen 3 and create any type of motion graphic or text animation that you'd like? I actually have a lot of text packs that I sell that I use as a primary source of income, and I'm curious to see if Gen 3 at this point could replicate any of those packs right now. Let's choose my text animation pack. It's one of our highest grossing text packs. I'll of course leave it in the description as well. It's basically supposed to give you just simple and practical text animations that you'd be able to use for most short form content for, I'm talking about titles, maybe lower thirds. And right now I'm going to try to replicate that pack in Gen 3. Okay, text actually works a lot better than I thought it would in Gen 3. Take a look at this. Look at the detail and the texturing that you see in each one of these characters. I'll be straight up honest with you, this is the stuff that would normally take a crazy long time to render in After Effects. And here's the crazy kicker, I'm realizing that in every prompt, you can say to put your text over a black background, and you could theoretically use a screen blending mode in any video editor to actually make the background transparent, allowing you to place the text over any existing video footage, which is crazy guys. Some possible downsides that I do see at the moment is that it might be hard to get the exact text animation that you want, regardless of how accurately you think you're describing it in the prompt. It's also almost impossible at this point to get the same prompt to give you the same exact animation in the future. 
Also, I've noticed that longer words seem to have significantly more spelling mistakes than shorter words, but I cannot emphasize enough, this is gonna be the absolute worst that Gen 3 is gonna be. It's gonna to continue to go up from here. It's gonna get better and better, and I'm extremely impressed at where it is right now. Guys, Gen 3 is not perfect. It's still gonna take a little finagling to get exactly what you're looking for, but goodness gracious, it's probably 10 times better than literally anything I've ever seen or played around with in the past. I would say that Gen 3 right now is as good or maybe even slightly better, dare I say, than a lot of the preview videos that I've seen for OpenAI Sora. And that's saying a lot, but guys, I doubt it's gonna be like this forever, and folks, that's the beauty of it. Both of these models, I'm talking about from OpenAI and from Runway, they're together gonna to continue to get better and better. They're gonna to continue to outpace and one-up each other in this ruthless game of competition. And in the end, we as the consumer, we're gonna get an increasingly better and most likely increasingly cheaper product, which is a really good thing. But guys, we gotta ask that one question, considering that we're all creatives, does this crazy impressive jump in generative AI development scare you?